Hey friends, I'm in studio today with my friend Jessica Alba. We're talking all about, oh my gosh, so much stuff that made (laughs) me cry. She had a priestess moment you guys are going to want to listen to, but we're talking all about um, mental health and being a woman in this world and so much. Yeah. It was a long conversation. Yeah, we covered many, many. Parenting. Many a topics. Yes. All right, friends, you don't want to miss it. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Hello, hello, Hill Squad. It's going to be a great day. You know why? Because we're going to know a lot more when we listen to this episode and part two of this episode, and then we're going to get better and we're going to do it together because that's what we do here. Our quote of the day is from our guest. When I became a mom, I finally felt grounded. That is from Jessica Alba, my friend who created this incredible company to make sure we had safe products for our babies and a company I'm looking to, to help me feel like I am providing a safe scenario for my child that's to come. Who better than Jessica to have on the show? So she was amazing. And I'll tell you a little bit about that in a second. But first, if you're new to the Heal Squad, welcome. We are here every single day on a journey to get better in all areas of life, especially health and wellness. And we do it with the best experts in the world, and we do it together. So welcome. You're officially a Heal Squad member. Um, If you haven't joined our Patreon, you should. We have amazing events monthly on Zoom where we're all connected and together, and you get access to these amazing experts that we have on the show that most of the time don't even have um, private clients anymore or take on clients. So you get access to them, plus you get ad-free shows and so much more. If you haven't left us a review, we will leave a link to that in the summary. Let us know how we're doing. We are so grateful for your feedback always. And Macy's obviously is a big supporter of this show. I'm so grateful as a a former employee back in the day. And on macy's.com backslash hill squad, you'll find my personally curated list of my favorite things on the website. I kind of call it my wish list because I pick the things that I love and then when I need something to go to an event or I need something in my kitchen or I'm doing something in my house, I can go in there and pick it really quick. Like recently I went to the Westin in Maui and I found my cover-ups I wanted. And so take a look at that. Anything you buy through that link supports the show and we are so grateful to you for that support. Now to my friend Jessica. Jessica Alba is an American actress, businesswoman, and author. In addition to her successful acting career, Alba is also the co-founder of The Honest Company, a consumer goods company focused on producing safe, non-toxic household products. Alba is a passionate advocate for sustainability and works tirelessly to promote eco-friendly and socially responsible business practices. In this interview, we're going to get to know more about her journey as an actress and entrepreneur and an environmentalist. Enjoy. I'm getting cozy with the whole Three Musketeers idea, but we'll see if I put in the second one. Okay. See how one goes. We're older. I want to know if we can handle another one realistically. You, it's interesting. It's the, I guess the best, this is kind of a morbid thought, but like my friend who's a single child and her her mom passed and it's now just her and her dad, but she was like, she has three kids. And she was like, um, you know, for me, the reason why I wanted to have more than one is because it was so hard to go through that by myself. Yeah. And so she was like, just having someone that gets it, that can be kind of, they're sort of like your best friend for life Mm -hmm. and through all the life stuff. If you have a good relationship with them. So Kevin and I both had rough sibling relationships. Right. But you'll have different types of parents. This is true. Because it has to do with the way I think, the way you set your kids up. You know, I said from the beginning, my kids couldn't be more different. Like they're very different and they fight and do all this stuff. But I said from day one, you guys, you guys are going to be best friends for life. Like this is your best friend. Is that how you want to treat your best friend? Since they were like three and six, you know, when they can kind of grasp a little bit of that concept. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of how you set them up and then reinforce. Um, I think our parents didn't know how to parent the way we know how to parent these days. There's books, there's yeah. therapy. I'm there's, reading them all. <laughs> yeah, there's also just like you, if you've done any self-realization, self-work, you realize how um, 
I don't know, how much you can do to be, to, to move through the world and to show your kids through example how they can move through the world. Yeah. Well, I know Kevin wants to throw in the second one at some point because he wants our daughter to have someone in case something happened to us. He's like, what if something happened to us? You know, it's it's nice to have another sibling. So we'll see. Where if you have to share the world with someone else, it almost kind of makes you like a more dynamic person from mm-hmm. jump. Yeah. You know, like knowing that the world doesn't revolve around me and you know, whatever that means, you kind of have to fight for your place in the world and care about things. And people aren't always going to be interested in everything you do. Yeah. You know, there's a lesson in that as well. So when you were starting off on this parenting journey, did you read a lot of books? Not a lot of books. There were like a few. Um, I did a lot of like, I think I also just did a lot of reflecting on how I grew up and wanting my kids to be set up differently. Um, Interesting. I want my kids to have a similar mm. situation and you want them to be different. Tell me why. Well, my parents were teen, essentially teenagers on, and not really prepared for a, adulting when I, I came around. So we learned together and I feel like I probably took on, I don't feel like I maybe had the freedom or I didn't feel like I had the freedom to be a child. I was very um, adult. Now, would that have been different if I would have had a different type of parents who were older and more settled? Um, Maybe, or maybe I it would have been similar. I don't know. But um, I'm grateful that they are who they are. And I had the experience I had because then I got to be who I am. So mm-hmm. I'm grateful for that. But I do want my kid. I always wanted my kids to really enjoy being kids and the freedoms that go with what that is, you know, like play and be curious and you don't have to do anything. Uh, don't feel the pressure to be something that is doesn't feel authentic. And um, if you're not great at something, just like try and chip away at it. And you'll learn a lot about yourself in the process of learning. Maybe you'll never be good at it. Yeah. You know, like just things like that. Um, a gentle, a more gentle approach. You know, I also had a big influence from were my grandparents who grew up with, in the depression era. So it was very, um, and they grew up with a lot of racism and there was still, and I would say arguably still a lot of sexism in the world. Um, and so it was a very patriarchy, uh, uh, kind of veil on top of a, you know, trying to live under the radar in America in a country that didn't really accept you. Um, and, and didn't really treated you as a second class citizen, no matter how hard you tried to be here, even though this country was founded on immigrants, Mm -hmm. uh, or this idea that immigrants can have a better life and, and hope for different types of freedoms. So it's a really interesting country. Um, but I had all that right on top of my parents and them just being young and, you know, they love to party and have fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that made you have to grow up fast. I don't know if it made me, but I did. I did grow up fast. Um, and I think some of it was nature, some of it is nurture. And, you know, at the same time, my parents were always like, believed I can be anything. And always, my dad was a feminist. Like he was like, don't rely on a man for anything. Like you can always make your own money. You can always be independent. Like you never want to be reliant on someone. Um, But what comes with that is me being kind of a very vocal and having strong opinions and not necessarily always agreeing with him. And that can be interpreted as, as disrespectful in our culture, you know, by not just being submissive to the male in the house. And so that was where we got a lot of tension 
because I interesting. But he was raising you like that. That's that's the irony, right? And then my mom was, you know, a really free spirit, um, a dreamer, big cheerleader, always kind of like had these grandiose um, hopes and dreams, but um, maybe didn't always for herself have the discipline, but encouraged that in me. And so she was like the best cheerleader. So I, I really believed I could do whatever it is I wanted to do. Um, but, you know, they were living paycheck to paycheck. And so it mattered when I, when I worked and I started working at 12, you know, that, 13. I know yeah, that, that really helped with them. I, it's so funny because that it's that immigrant background that teaches you, you can do anything. Cause my dad used to say, Maria, you can do anything you put your mind to. And I believed him because we were janitors cleaning nightclubs. I'm like, well, where else can we go but up? Mm-hmm. And I did the same thing. I started working at 13 at Dunkin' Donuts. And at first I thought I was working to make money for me to buy clothes. <laughs> and then I quickly realized I'm helping to pay bills. Yeah. So that was the same for you? Yeah. Yep. Because they, my dad was like, well, if your mom's not working and she's taking you to auditions, then you're basically supplementing her income. And so if she's going to, and I was like, well, why don't we just hire someone to go do that? And then mom can have another job. And she was like, do you think I'm going to let my daughter with some stranger, (laughs) you know, go around Hollywood? Oh, hell no. Also like it's, it's a, it's a glamorous life. Like she also loves the glamour and she loves the glitz and she loves the fantasy, um, which I, it's interesting because I never cared about that part of Hollywood. I was never enamored with it. I didn't care. I never cared about movie stars or I, I, I was like, I feel like we're on the same level. I didn't like praise people like that. I don't know. My dad was like, you're just trying to be cool. I was like, no, I genuinely don't care. Like I can appreciate someone's work, but I'm not like dying for them. But so if you were not able to be in this business anymore, Mm -hmm. do you think it would affect you? Um, it's interesting because I had it. I mean, I, when I started honest, I really stepped back from this business because it got to a place where it wasn't giving me back as much as I was putting into it. It was like the boyfriend that would never commit. <laughs> and I, there's only so much rejection, like for every thing that you ever saw me in, I had a thousand no's. I had a, you know, thousands of cases where they told me I wasn't this enough or that enough or this. And there's only so much that you can take. And I was really, my brain and my sensibility was really where Hollywood is today, where I was like, you know, we need to be, we need female action heroes. Like we need women as stars of thrillers. Like women should be, you know, one, two, and three leads and men will still want to watch it. It's okay. And Mm -hmm. frankly, women will finally see themselves. And also I thought there can be more diversity. Not everyone has to be like a blonde hair, blue eyed girl or just kind of like what was accepted as a typical leading lady. I felt like there could be different shades of different folks. Um, And anytime I try to push for that, I just kept getting, um, you know, that's urban um, or, uh, you know, there's already two things that are greenlit with female leads that are in this 100 million plus, um, or they don't really make 30 million you know, dollar budgets. They don't really like work internationally. Like they always gave gave me excuses why Mm -hmm. that wasn't going to work. So I just got kind of frustrated. And then thank God, you know, while I built Honest, the world sort of caught up and we have amazing young stars, um, movie stars, girl, women um, who are unapologetic. You know, these younger girls can come up and they can just be like unapologetic unapologetically fierce and opinionated Mm -hmm. and just say, no, you can't put me in a box, you know, Selena Gomez and these girls. It's cool. It's cool to see. It really is. Jennifer Lawrence. You were like that from go. It's funny this morning. My husband was like, he threw out his back. He was like, I can't be there going to the chiropractor, but you have to tell Jessica something. I go, no, no, no. I'm going to videotape it. You tell her because I will not remember half of it the way you say it. 
And it's speaking to this point, which is funny. So I was going to show you this at the end before you left, but I'll show it to you now. All right, honey, you wanted to send Jessica a message. I figured videos better. Okay, so Jess, you probably don't remember this, but at the Fantastic Four premiere or the screening, uh, you pulled me aside and you said, aren't you proud of your girl? And you're referring to Maria. And uh, I was like, yeah, my God, I'm so proud of her. Um, and I don't know, as time's gone on, Max agrees. As time goes on, I really just appreciate that so much more because here you were in your you know, early 20s, um, but you were you know, championing, championing Maria, a you know, fellow female, and you know, rightfully putting me in my place, which I was there, I promise, and you know, <laughs> if, you, if you know me, but, but I don't think a lot of people are. I don't know, I just think it was really cool, and especially for a young person to reach out and do that, uh, it really is no coincidence. You've had all the success you've had and you've been able to do what you've done. It's it's none of it's a coincidence. And uh, anyway, I was very grateful for that moment and I remain grateful for it. And I, uh, I continue to admire you for all of your work. Nice, Bill. Oh, that's so sweet. He always talks about that because you were always about women and championing because it's become the popular thing now. It was not popular back no, then. It wasn't. And it wasn't genuine and still isn't genuine sometimes. It's true. I'm watching people who on social media will say all these things. And behind the scenes, they're telling me the complete opposite. But that's not you. You were always genuine about it. And so, yes, times have caught up. And now you're in a position where you're able to executive produce and create your own opportunities. Mm -hmm. so, and for others. Exactly. Which but is the point. I also know from other people that have worked with you where you're like, no, I want to make sure that we have a diverse set. I want to make sure that we have women in power and in powerful positions. So it must be cool to kind of look back and say, okay, I took a pause. I built this brand that helped me, my family, and so many millions of other people. Mm -hmm. And then I've been able to circle back to this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's interesting when you realize kind of like the power you can harness and the also the ability to walk away and say no. So, you know, there was something that came up where I was working and, and, and doing something in entertainment. And I found out that the lead uh, wasn't getting as much as my quote. And I was like, and they were like, oh, you can't get your quote because her quote isn't that quote. And I was like, well, then raise her quote. How about you raise her quote to my quote? Next. Who else is going to do it? And so I got raised. Yeah. Keep it moving. And I they're like, it. well, you could lose this opportunity. I'm like, then they pass on me. Next. I don't care. Then they, then they don't want me to be here. But that's how I like to operate. You know? So then it's, it's like taking those bold steps. And, and I've been, I can't, do, I can't not be appreciative that I'm in a situation where I can walk away and say no, but it, it is the biggest, greatest power we have yeah. is to be able to say, no, this is my worth. And this is the worth of the people around me. And if the world isn't going to look that way, then I don't need to be part of this. You know, that's how change is made. That's how change is made. It's true. You made a lot of change in the world with honest, the company. Um, how has clean evolved since you started? Well, it didn't exist <laughs> when I started. It was like, you know, the natural space, which is very, I think, what people expect. It's, you know, but you think of more like hemp and like vegan and like that that thing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think for people who are like, I just want to like, I love beautiful design I just want to live in the world and I don't want to have to worry that this thing that I'm using could have an adverse effect on my health in any way, shape or form. And there are lots of hidden kind of issues with a lot of the chemicals that are in products and they don't test them for safety. And we do, they've even found like hundreds of chemicals that are in umbilical cords. So what- Oh, I've been hearing about that. So, actually. and this has been- They've had these studies for like 20 plus years, but it stays in academia. 
it never comes into consumer products. Mm -hmm. So I was like, how about we get some of this information that gets locked up in academia and have it inform how a consumer products company runs? And so, and we have many needs. One of the, the beauty industry is actually one of the absolute worst when it comes to exposures to um, potentially harmful chemicals. And it's like body sprays and it's like deodorants mm -hmm. and it's like lotions. creams and lotions and hairsprays and hair products and nail products and all of it, um, baby products, detergents. So I was like, it was such a vast and wide and scary thing to know about. And I felt like, what can I do? So I lobbied on Capitol Hill. I quickly learned that health is a uh, becomes a partisan issue in government. It's not about what's the right thing to do. It's like, are you a conservative? Or are you a wacko liberal from LA? And I was like, how about I'm not either? I'm a human who wants to be I, healthy. <laughs> I want a human and I don't think anybody should be poisoned by the stuff that they're putting in on and, or around themselves, period. And, um, and I don't think it's right. Um, and it's, and, you know, then they're like, well, that's regulation. And I'm like, well, we need someone just to make sure that if we can buy it at any local store, that it's safe. And there's just really not that oversight. Um, so I was like, and well, still, no, still, they still exist. It still exists. There's still a ton of chemicals that are really bad for you that are, have been tested in Europe because they have a different way where they have to test chemicals to make sure they're safe at the percentage in use before they're even allowed to be brought into the marketplace. And a lot of these things aren't like you're exposed and the next day you get something bad. It's over time. It's a cumulative Yeah. Thing. And it's like, well, this nasty chemical, if you get a little bit of it and all of these things, now you have a lot of it every day. That kind of makes sense. Like, thyroid stuff is endocrine. Mm -hmm. And when you talk to a woman, every other woman has some kind of thyroid issue. I, I think that every year, like there are new findings, new things that come off the list where it's like, okay, now that's dangerous because it's an evolving thing, right? But also no studies get performed unless someone funds it. So unless someone's going to pay to uh, do some type of study around it, so someone has to finance the study before they even do the testing f to validate that it's safe or not safe. I mean, it's it's all done in the private sector. It's not in the public se sector. And so this is what's so wild. And these companies have plenty of money to be able to do the testing. Well, also, if there's government oversight, they could at least say, here's some standards and practices that you can, here's a protocol of how to do it. And frankly, we can rip it off of Europe because mm -hmm. they do it already. Which is why it's so great when you have disruptors like you or even Elon Musk with the Teslas coming in and saying, okay, you guys aren't going to fix anything. We're going to make something that is going to be good for us. Well, I think it's also like by giving a viable other option that's at, at scale, um, now consumers can choose. Mm-hmm. Now they're like, oh, wait, I can care about, wait, first of all, I didn't even know there were chemicals that I should be afraid of. Yeah. And also not everything natural is healthy. So there's that as well, right? Because there's a lot of things in nature that you led, you know, is not healthy and not great for you to, to be exposed to. And then there's, you know, a bunch of things that are um, obviously made in a lab that are not healthy. Mm -hmm. And so it's a combination of both. And it's com a lot of common sense and a lot of taking of a lot of these studies that have been done over the last 20, 30 years and applying them um, to build out your, your standards and practices. So we have an honest standard that we adhere to um, and it's we have a rigorous um, process. But I had to build my own labs. We have our own chemists. We have our own regulatory team. And then we have a supply and ops team to make sure that the integrity of these, these uh, ingredients and our raw materials are what we say they are. So it's like a whole situation where like when you have an idea about creating, you know, better for your or clean products, when I first started, you know, I didn't realize I had to do all of those other things in order for that to be true. Um, I just had this like, wouldn't it be great if people weren't getting 
poison for no reason. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be great if people just be healthier? Because if you have your health, you can be happier. Yeah. You know, without your help, it's really hard. Healthy, it's really hard. Um, not that it's impossible, but it just makes it all a lot more challenging. So I grew up with a lot of health issues as a kid. Really? Mm -hmm. what, what were you dealing with? Um, so I had chronic um, kidney infections mm. um, when I was little for, for like two years. And they finally said like, it's damaging your kidneys so much that you have to have this surgery. So at six, I had that surgery uh, and I had really chronic asthma and allergies. So I spent every cold turn into pneumonia. So like the second I got a cold, I was like, oh, this is going to be a week in the hospital. It's so annoying. It was like so annoying. Wow. Um, sometimes two weeks I had breathing machines at home. I was regularly having a breathing machine, always on steroids. My throat closed several times. Um, we lived on an Air Force base and it was literally down the street from the hospital. Thank God. Cause that a hundred percent saved my life a few times. So that was all up until I was like 12, 11, a lot of surgery, a lot. a lot of things. Um, and then it was wild. Like when I started working, I started making different choices. Like even like, I like wanted to be a vegan and, or, you know, I didn't want to hurt animals. And I went through that phase, but I also was in charge of like grocery store, you know, stuff. And I was like, you know, I wanted to cook for myself. I wanted to be in charge. Um, that was always kind of my personality. So anything that made me sneeze or I would make me wheeze, I just you wouldn't cut. buy. I cut out. So just through process of elimination, I started cleaner kind of practices. And if the house was being cleaned with harsh chemicals, all the windows and doors I opened up. You know, and I couldn't do it because I would immediately have an asthma attack. Wow. Um, but then I learned about like vinegar and baking soda. Yeah. <laughs> like essential oils. Yeah. Um, and all of that. And I got into like home homeopathic. Yeah. Homeopathic kind of practices. When I moved to Australia, I did a TV show in Australia for two years. So the um, onset nurse was into that and she taught me that. And yeah. So like through the years, I just sort of always kind of leaned into more natural, better for you um, things. And, uh, and so it, it was like when I became a mom and I, and I learned about all these chemicals and products across all these different sectors. And I was a face of two beauty campaigns, like two big beauty brands. And I learned about even just how there's different products that we were selling that I was a face of for the Americans that was different than Europe because Europe had the higher standards. Oh, yeah. And I was feeling some kind of way about it. I was like, I can't, because I'm such a, like, I have such a moral compass, you know? And it, I just had this like pit in my stomach. And I was like, I can't sell this. It's so hard for me to be the face of something that I know. It just feels like trickery. It just feels wrong that, that people don't know this. So what did you do? So I created the solution. I created Honest. <laughs> <laughs> I created Honest. I was like, ah, oh, if no one else is going to do it, I'm going to do it. And all my agents and manager and, you know, lawyers, everyone, business manager, they were like, they thought I was crazy. Also, because Hollywood really isn't, they don't like run normal kind of like business P&Ls. No. You know? You were the first, I think, to do this. Um, where I was like, you know, there's a huge issue even with like black and brown communities who are um, disproportionately exposed to these chemicals and don't have a ton of options and like and even, affordable options. Yeah, because exactly. that's the thing. It's I was at Target the other day and I saw all of your products there because I'm starting to buy things mm -hmm. for my baby mm -hmm. and. And if it's not affordable, it's not easy for... It's not accessible. Yeah. It's just not. And so for me, it was like a big one to just make it accessible. And, you know, accessibility is a combination of price, but then also like, what are the real values? Like, what are you putting into this? Like, are we going to be as cheap as the cheapest thing on the shelf? Absolutely not. Why? Because it's cheaper to make things with chemicals that are not great. Mm -hmm. And it's more expensive to make things with this level of scrutiny and integrity, you know? So we're going to be accessible. We're going to be within reach. 
Um, and uh, and then sometimes we'll flex. Sometimes we'll be a little bit more accessible. Sometimes we'll be a little bit less, just depending on. It's not like a one size fits all. It depends on what you're making. Yeah. So. So as I embark on this journey, um, I have to thank you because that's the first thing that I've been thinking of is I have to make sure that we are as careful as possible. There still is Windex in my house. There are still <laughs> some things that my husband won't let go of yet. But I'm like, we use the vinegar on the floors and the baking soda and all that. But but you don't which, need to. There's now a lot of detergents that um, I would say if you can go maybe towards things that doesn't have um, fragrance or perfume. Mm -hmm. So if you just literally buy things and it, it doesn't have perfume or fragrance, um, natural essential oils, sure, that's fine. But the perfume or when it says fragrance and it doesn't specify that it's naturally derived, then that's that's for me the best thing when it comes to baby, detergents, your own beauty, uh, your husband's personal care, all of it. Uh, I think that's like the best, easiest way to shop clean. Yeah, that's great because people don't know. Everyone thinks we're a big company, but we're still the little engine that could. We're such a tiny company. What? We are compared to these businesses that have been around for 100 plus years. But you've also, you're not around as long because you started what, in 2012? Yeah, but these companies are like, when you just think of like their household penetration or you think of just like the distribution that they have in retail, um, we're still a tiny no way. Piece of the puzzle. Yeah, because we've only been around for 11 years. Yeah. You know? I just think of you guys as big as all the bigs. I think of you guys on that level. I mean, I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it. We still have a long, a long runway. Um, and it's exciting because I have a new um, CEO, Carla Vernon, and she's amazing. And, uh, and we just brought in a new um, chief growth officer. Her name's Kate Barton. And she worked in, you know, it's interesting when you get into business and you're like, does someone have experience in, you know, sustainability and in, you know, um, good business practices? You know, they need to be able to run a P&L, but then also run marketing. Um, and then also do they... Um, understand like where the trends are going and not need necessarily like a study to validate before they go into it. You mm -hmm. know, can they trust their gut? Have they been right a few times that they're, they can flex a bit? Um, can they see white space opportunities? And then also, do they know e -com? Do they know social media? Do they know new media marketing? Oh, so much. It's so much. So you you try to find these like rock stars that are few and far between. And then do they get the consumer? You know, do they, are they consumer centric, like genuinely? Because that is what I founded this company on, you know? And it's, um, you know, you know, when you know your audience yeah. and when you can speak to them in their language and they feel like seen and heard by you, they're loyal, you know? Yeah. And and it's the same way with um, consumer product companies, I think, and beauty companies. Like, we all need to operate that way. And we in entertainment, we've been doing this because that's how you, that's how you, like, stay alive, stay alive <laughs> is by reaching your audience and yeah. having a direct relationship with them, frankly. Mm -hmm. And it's the thing that, like, no agent or studio executive is going to do that for you. No. 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 I, I mean, technically, they're just answering calls. 100%. <laughs> and yeah. that's what people never understand. They're, they're like, call business. my agents aren't doing anything. I go, because they're not going that's to. Not You're supposed job. to do it. Yeah. And then they take credit for it. <laughs> they're in the incoming call business and it's fine. Yeah. That's how it's set up. And they hold the keys to the castle. Yeah. It's facts. All right, friends, we're going to leave this interview right here because we went on for a long time. It was two girls gabbing that haven't had time to gab in a long time. But the second episode is amazing. Please tune in tomorrow. Jessica has been on a healing journey of her own the last five years, and we're going to get to know more about what she's done to heal her mind, her, um, let's say, type anus, and so much more. We're going to learn more about her parenting what she's done that she 
was proud of and happy she did and some of the things that she would take back if she could. I was very surprised by that one too. And so much more. So tune in for part two tomorrow. Distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or MariaMenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.